Hello, so rumors of my death have been greatly exaggerated. However, rumors of my laziness, not so much. So if you've been watching the entire three videos that are on this YouTube channel prior to this one, you'll be aware that I've already built this, which is a one to 60 replica of the United States NASA space shuttle. Uh, it's a fictional one. It's called Ambition because I didn't want to commit to replicating an existing space shuttle because then I had to get it way more accurate than this is, but that's the thing that happened. And uh, there's, yeah, three videos about it. So if you want to see how I built it, go and watch it in tedious detail over there somewhere. But anyway, about five minutes after I built this thing, I realized that I also needed to build this, which is the Russian space shuttle or the Soviet space shuttle, because it wasn't really Russia back then, it was the USSR, but that's a whole different story. This is built pretty much the same way as the other one, so I don't know that I really need to go into too much tedious detail about how it was built, but uh, I'll give you a quick tour of it anyway, and I'll show you some pictures of it being constructed, because again, I'm a very lazy person, and I didn't think to actually shoot that much video as I was putting it together. Besides, it's just another space shuttle, it's pretty much the same thing again. So the orbiter itself is mostly uh, 3D printed. Well, I say mostly 3D printed. The nose is 3D printed. The tail section here, uh, well, this bit, this bit, uh, is 3D printed and the wings are 3D printed. This part here is made up mostly from uh, pieces of wood and pieces of PVC pipe to create that curve across the top. Uh, on the American shuttle, I actually made the wings the hard way. Here's some pictures of video of the uh, the inside of the wings on the American version. Uh, this time I just 3D printed them because it's easier. And uh, the same story on the Energia uh, rocket. Uh, all of these components are 3D printed. The dome or the cone is 3D printed. And the rest of it, all of the tubular parts are just various sizes of PVC pipe. A lot of the size and scale of these things is dictated by the sizes that you can get in PVC pipes and the ratios that they relate to. So this one ended up falling into the same scale as the American one, largely because the main rocket on the Anagia rocket and the little side rockets, the... can't remember the name, I'll put it down there. They have a name, the Zenit. The Zenit rockets, those ones, the ones on the side, the Zenit rockets, Zenit rockets. So the diameter of the uh, the main Energia rockets and the Zenit rockets happen to coincide to a couple of sizes of PVC pipe that work together quite well, so that's what dictated the scale of the thing. I think this one is actually a tiny bit larger in scale than the American one, so yay! And pretty much all of the detail at the bottom here, 3D printed. I did use some uh, Stuart Temple Black 2.0 on these to get this nice ultra matte finish on there and then a tiny bit of uh, aged bronze I think it is Robin Buff. Uh, no it's Spanish copper. Cobra Espanol. Uh, it's also apparently mounted so that's fun. Now I called the American Space Shuttle Ambition because I wanted to give it a name that wasn't a name from one of the existing orbiters because I didn't want to be committed to accurate detail on it. So. Anyone who looks at it will go, oh, it's called Ambition, therefore I can't look at it and go, well, you missed that bit that was on the front of Atlantis. Uh, I wanted to do the same thing with the Russian one. So the real Russian shuttle, the one that flew in, I think it was 1985, Wrong. Try again, was called Buran, which is Russian for snowstorm or blizzard. And I've noticed that most Russian spacecraft and some aircraft seem to be named after uh, meteorological events, weather events. So I went searching for a name that I could call this thing and I ended up settling on Vikravoy, which is, if my uh, Google translating attempts have worked out correctly, is Russian for vortex or maelstrom, which I thought was pretty cool. Um, uh, I also ended up selecting that name because I really wanted something that looked cool in Cyrillic, so something that had lots of funky Cyrillic letters in it, so uh, that's the name that I ended up with, it's the Vikravoy. Here's my 3D printing pro tip for the day, it's not really a pro tip, it's a pretty dumb tip, but maybe it'll help you if you've got the capability of using the software to do it. So. There's a lot of big parts that I printed for this. I say big, but I'm very lazy and I do everything that I can to make my 3D prints go as quickly as possible. So anything bigger than about that, I consider to be big. Anything that takes multiple hours is big. So with the front end of this piece, the, 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 the nose cone, 
Uh, what I've actually done is I've sliced it up as if it was a cube, or rather cut it up, because slice means something else in 3D printer terminology, but I've cut it up into a cube and eliminated the middle bit. So here's some pictures of the parts that I've actually printed. You can see I've only printed the top, the sides and the front, and then fit them together, because when I look at a shape like that, which is a big, chunky, cone-shaped thing, I can see that in the middle of it there is a cube of stuff that is going to be 3D printed basically just as infill, for no reason, and that's about six hours of printing just to print that pointless cube in the middle. So if I eliminate that and only print the outside pieces, I can glue them together afterwards and I've just saved many, many, many hours on the print. So if you can ever do that with something and you're happy to do that, it especially works for this because I know that I'm going to finish the outside of the thing with something completely different. So this entire model is covered with EVA foam. Uh, if you're planning on finishing and painting a model, maybe you might want to do it differently or Maybe this tip works for you, I don't know, but uh, eliminating that stuff that doesn't actually need to be printed, I find there's a lot of value in that. So yeah, you can see on the front here that I've, I've only printed the side pieces. And the same on the back. I've cut bits out of the back as well, just to eliminate stuff that either I don't actually need to print because it serves no purpose, or I can replace with something else like styrene plastic or just a piece of wood if it's just something that's structural on the internal area of uh, a piece. So. There you go, you can, you, can, you can take that and add it to your arsenal of potentially useless pieces of 3D printing advice. Also, if you're printing stuff that's going to go on the inside of something, that's going to be finished on the outside with something completely different, like fabric or EVA foam or whatever, you don't have to print it in great detail. So uh, all of the internal parts on this were printed at like 0.3 layer thickness, which is about as harsh as my 3D printer will go, and that just cuts so much off the print time. I hate print time. I want things to print as quickly as they possibly can. Uh, the engines and details on the back, I did print at higher detail because I knew they weren't going to be finished and I didn't want to do as much work cleaning those up and filling in all the print lines and all that stuff that you've got to do with 3D prints. So not so, not so lazy on those bits. If you're curious about how the rocket itself goes together, it's very much like the other one. The cone is actually a separate piece. So I've used the, uh, the intertank area here as a place to hide the seam and what we effectively have is a bunch of nuts and bolts in there that hold the tubes onto the side. So it's really not complex at all. These little triangular pieces are part of this and these pieces are part of the, the, the Zenit rockets. So uh, yeah, not particularly complex at all. Very simple solution. Seems to work quite well. Yay. If I ever build another one, I'll do it the same way, but I'm not building another one. The text on the front was stenciled and as you can see, not very well. Uh, the outside of the orbiter is covered with EVA foam, which has been scored with a knife and then hit with a heat gun, same as on the other one. But in this case, uh, due to the way the Soviets designed their shuttle, it actually doesn't have any uh, uh, heat blankets on the outside. The whole thing is covered with tiles. So I didn't get to use any fabric on the outside. It actually made it a lot quicker to put this one together. Now I realize this video is very much about the model and not about the actual Russian orbiter, but uh, I'm going to tell you some stuff about it anyway, in case you don't know. So uh, Buran, I believe, correction down below if I'm wrong, uh, was uh, launched in 1985 and it did fly. It flew one unmanned mission and it looks a lot like the American space shuttle because I'm largely convinced that the Russians just looked over their back fence and went, oh, Americans build space shuttle. We should also build space shuttle. We'll make it look like that one. And they did. So it's based on, from my understanding, uh, the, the information about the American Space Shuttle was publicly available at the time, so they could actually look it up, but it was mostly based on appearances. So obviously this shape works quite well for a space plane orbiter, uh, but they did actually make some, uh, I, I don't want to say improvements, they made some refinements along the way. So. One of the things that they did was they removed the Space Shuttle main engines. Here's one I prepared earlier. You can see the American one has engines on here and the Russian one doesn't. It has engines down here. Uh, they've actually removed them from here because it doesn't actually make that much sense. I'm not a rocket engineer, so don't criticize me here, but it doesn't make that much sense to have your external tank pumping through your plane to launch your shuttle. So uh, they use this one. So this thing underneath, the Energia rocket, assembly itself is what propels this thing into space. Once it gets up there, this is just a plane. It, the, these engines on the American Space Shuttle, they do nothing once it's up there. They're just carrying these engines, carrying these engines and all the weight of these engines for no reason. So the Russians looked at that and thought, well, hey, we'll change that. So they did. So when you look at the back of this guy, there are no main engines here. All of this assembly 
is the equivalent of these lumpy things on the side of this one. OMS thrusters are not called lumpy things. You don't look up at the technical specification that says lumpy things, not lumpy things. OMS thrusters, so there you go. That's, uh, that's fun. Just so you know, I'm not a school teacher, so don't believe a thing that I say, even though I actually have a second channel that's dedicated to educational content. Subscribe. Sometimes when you're building something, you do that one thing on a model and it suddenly goes pop and becomes what it's supposed to be. For, for this guy, it was these. There's something about adding in these sort of pixely looking random black and white tiles here that just turned this instantly into the Russian orbiter. So yeah, that's cool. So yeah, I made the Soviet space shuttle to go with the American space shuttle because you just can't have one. Uh, thanks for watching. And if you liked this, maybe you could like subscribe or something. You don't have to, but you know, whatever. I know it's been like a year since I last posted a video, but maybe I'll post more. Thanks for watching. part of the final, you know, that was, uh, let's try that again in using uh, English words.